Hello everybody and we are back for another week, another game, the University of North Dakota NCAA 13 Dynasty and we're looking at Brandon Lewis here in recruiting real quick, an athlete, scouting him out, seeing what kind of abilities he has um, and then trying to get him, He's we're number one on his list so right now not looking too shabby for the three star athlete, that'll be nice. Um, but something I wanted to just quickly touch on, you guys can look at the recruiting here, but um, NCAA 14, recently they released the first screenshot for that, mentioning possibly something about the first cut. Sounds like improved uh, foot planting, or some kind of foot planting mechanic that will improve the runner's ability. We'll see once they release more information, obviously we'll be able to analyze that. Um, I'm not one to overanalyze these kind of things, but I will talk about them. Uh, there's also... Apparently going to be ultimate team in NCAA, NCAA 14, which is interesting because technically they don't have licensed players in NCAA. They technically have fake players um, that aren't licensed. So, I mean, they can still do it, but it's just kind of a little bit different in that aspect. So, um, I think it's an interesting idea, but I really hope the gameplay is improved in NCAA 14. And I hope they make Dynasty more interesting. Um, I really, I mean, I like Dynasty mode and I enjoy NCAA 13, but it's far from perfect. Far from perfect. And uh, one thing is I hope the game is just more dynamic um, in, in 14 because the game right now is a little bit predictable and there are, there's just too much, too many money plays and other plays that just never work. There are plays that will work almost all the time and there are plays that will never work because it's simply a broken system so uh, I'll make probably some other videos once they release more information about 14 uh, let's get to the action at hand we're taking on Colorado State a team that has not lost in conference play they are 3 and 0 in the Mountain West and uh, they're coming to Grand Forks hoping to bust up a UND team that's starting to feel, you know, we're starting to pick up a little bit momentum here. We had a tough loss against Boise State, but, you know, we've been able to hang in there against some of these teams. And look at this play by RJ McGill. Look at that. Beautiful spin move, and now we are in their territory in this first drive of the game. Mitch Sutton up the middle. Oh my goodness, this guy. I'm tempted to start Mitch Sutton, because look at him go. He's bigger. He's still got that kind of quickness, but he's also got some power to him. So let me know, guys. Would you rather see Jake Miller start? He's the current starting halfback. Or Mitch Sutton? I'm really kind of torn between the two because they're both very solid players. I don't know which one I want to start. But here, Grayson, the quarterback, Garrett Grayson for Colorado State, puts a little too much air under that ball, and then they go with an option. But our defense will not be fooled, and Damon Andrews is all over that play. So third and 13. Garrett Grayson back to pass. Greenwood would be out of bounds, but even if he had caught that, he would have been short. So they punted away. Our defense holds three and out on the first drive. But then overthrows a bad throw by Hendrickson as he was pressured, and Austin Gray, the safety, I believe, for Colorado State, comes up with the INT. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. And now Law makes it a gain of 18 for a first down, and on second down. Grayson pressured, apparently. I don't know what he was thinking on that play. He just made a bad throw. Third and ten, and Garrett Grayson is going to overthrow his man. He's looking a little off today. I don't know, but there you go. This this Colorado State team had a lot of buzz going around them in the Mountain West. A lot of people talking highly about them. They've got some great numbers. They had a tough loss against Utah State a couple weeks ago, but they've been able to bounce back with some solid conference wins. And uh, we would be stopped fourth in inches, so punting it away. And they go in the Wildcat with Nwoki. I don't know how to say his name, but he throws an interception. They were throwing out of the Wildcat. And Eric Merzero would be stopped at the one-yard line with that INT. And oh my word, this couldn't get any better for UND. Short field. And on second and goal, Jake Miller, he could have walked into the end zone. I don't know, but there we go. It's a 14 to nothing lead for UND. In the first quarter against a very solid Colorado State team. And here is Sack. That is some serious sackage. And the halfback, Nwoki. I can't say his name. I don't know how to say it, so I'm just going to 
do this. I don't have to send anymore though because he is actually out for the rest of the game with a concussion. So the backup half pack would be in and that's huge because Iwoki is a very talented player despite the fact that I cannot say his name. And so here we go. Jones gets a handoff here for a nine yard gain. Second and one would be the upcoming down in the second quarter now. And they're going to give it off to Jones out of the shotgun but no cigar. No cigar for you young man. You're probably too young. So here we go. Third and five. Garrett Grayson does find his man Gilmore and this is a very talented tight end we're looking at here, Gilmore. He could very well be a pro prospect. But there we go, and he's going to find Kaufman over the middle. A nice post route for about 20 yards on that play. So third and three. Grayson back to pass. Looking, looking. Looks to his right. Corner of the end zone. No good. Once again, the defense holds, and it's only a field goal. CSU only comes away with a field goal. So we go to the next drive, third and five. It was a screen play, but it was covered. So go to Harden, and what do you know? First down. It's first and ten. Hendrickson's looking for Jake Miller. What an acrobatic catch. Miller says, I want to be the starting halfback. He makes a leaping grab, and we'll do a little draw play action with Mitch Sutton. Look at that. This is beautiful running. Just beautiful. Our offense is clicking today. I don't know what it is, but second down, and look at this. The freshman. Jameer Jackson is merely a freshman. This dude has lots of potential. He's having a great season so far. So, for second down, I was going to say first down, I don't know what I'm thinking, but just over two minutes to go in the first half, a little read option give to Jake Miller, only a yard though, the blocking was not all that fantastic, so Hendrickson on third and nine, lofts it up, and Greg Harden comes away with the most, I don't even know, this was a ridiculous catch, you got to see this closer here guys, look at this, look at how he catches that, somehow keeps his balance in the air, Shakes off two tacklers before getting tackled in the end zone. It's a touchdown of 33 yards. Hendrickson to Harden. A great combination right there. A beautiful catch in... I don't even know, but here we go. It's Greenwood on the kick return after that big play, and he says, uh-uh. This game... We're going to stay in this game. We're Colorado State. We're going to stay in this game. And 100-yard kickoff return... That is demoralizing because we just went up, and now it's back to an 11-point game. But still, that's not a bad thing. But here we go, Austin Gray getting another interception. 30 seconds to go in the first half, and that's just even more demoralizing. Underthrown, though, that was a bad throw. It wasn't a good decision, so my bad. But Garrett Grayson, 30 seconds to go in the first half. He's going to find Greenwood on a little... Kind of corner route there. Huge gain and sets them up in field goal range. Now the backup halfback Jones getting his taste of the action. So they will kick the field goal with five seconds left. It sneaks in on the right upright. And it is an eight-point game, which technically is a one-score game. So 21-13 to 13 at the end of the first half. The Rams would get the ball to start the second half. And the defense hoping to come up with a big stop here. Garrett Grayson, he's going to be sacked, and the fumble is forced. Ben Peters is there to scoop it up, and nobody's going to catch him. He's gone. Touchdown. The first play of the second half, and UND gets it on a fumble return by Ben Peters. Look at this athleticism by Peters. He just comes flying in there. And he even gives a little wave to the defense. Says, uh-uh, you're not touching this. A little piece of MC Hammer in him, I guess, but I don't know. So, it's a 28 to 13 game. UND having the game of their the game of the season right now. They're playing out absolutely outstanding against a very good Colorado State team. And here, third down, Grayson avoids the sack, but he cannot get the first down and so UND hoping to open up this game. They just want to go crazy and the running game is where it's at right now. Mitch Sutton up the gut for about I don't know 10 12 yards on that play. Second and nine now as we're approaching the midway point of the third quarter. Hendrickson back to pass coverage is very good by the Rams, but he's going to take off as he has miles of green in front of him. I'm going to a little studio update for you guys. Number nine, Kansas State. Having problems with Iowa State. Only two and three. The Cyclones, they're trying to upset the number nine team in the country. So we'll see how that goes. But... Hendrickson here on third and four, and Seth Wistoff, the tight end with the one-handed grab. 
clutch play. Hendrickson looking deep this time for RJ McGill. It's broken up. Had one on one coverage. That's why we decided to take that chance there. So third and seven. And who's there but Townsend? He's a good fourth wide receiver. He gets it done. First down. And we're setting up deep into Rams territory. But they stop Miller on that run. No gain. So it's third down and 10. UND looking to strike. And defender breaks that pass up. I believe that was intended for Townsend. And it would be a field goal. For UND. But look at that drive. 13 plays, 67 yards, 4 minutes and 24 seconds off the clock. But here the Rams go now down by 18, giving it to Jones on the screenplay. We blitzed on that play and they caught us. They caught us off guard big time. So now we start the fourth quarter. Colorado State wants a big comeback here. They would love to do it on the road team that's hoping to remain undefeated in Mountain West play. Second and seven, Grayson gives it off to Jones up the middle. Jones can get about five yards on that one. Third and two. Defense wants a big stop here. It may well be four down territory, but here we go. Doesn't need to be four down territory because Gilmore wide open. So they're going to go for two to try to make it a ten point game here. Jones going to get the handoff right up the middle and he is going to be stopped about a half yard shy. So they would fail the conversion attempt. 31-19, the score, UND still leading big. And here, Mitch Sutton, look at this guy, man. Look at this guy. Unbelievable. Seven rushes, 56 yards, a touchdown. I mean, for everything that's gone wrong this season, that is one thing that has gone right. So here we go, Jake Miller fighting for those yards. He is a tough guy for as little as he is. He's a tough guy. Second and two. Jake Miller going to get the handoff here again, and there's a flag on the play. About a loss of one there. but And it is holding against Ian McGurin, the center. Come on, dude. You know better than that. I was just shaking my head. But anyway, third and nine now. Being hurt by that penalty. But we're going to get a little screenplay action to Jake Miller. They were blitzing us on third down repeatedly. And so on this play, try to take advantage of that with a screenplay, and it is very successful. Miller are going to get another play. He's getting a lot of calls in this game. He gets nine yards. Now just over two minutes to go after Colorado State takes a timeout. Mitch Sutton stopped for no gain. So we're going to take another field goal. It's only 34 to 19, 15 points is the lead. We took three and a half off the clock on that drive, so trying to make sure they have as little time to initiate any kind of comeback and what is this Titan Gilmore this guy's ridiculous and burning our defense up unbelievable so under two minutes first down now in Colorado State another big play about 14 yards on that gain third and four now later in the drive and Jones is gonna be stopped a yard short of the first down our defense comes up big They've come up big all game, really. I mean, they've had a few weak spots, but for the most part, it's been a great game for the defense. And here, Ross Brenneman should have had him stopped. He missed the tackle. That allows Jones to get the first down. Second and goal now. 47 seconds on the clock. Grayson looking back at the end zone. Broken up. Good defense on that play. We got pressure. Broke it up on the back end. Third and goal now. Grayson finds Gilmore. For his second touchdown of the game, the tight end having a great day. And now they're going for two to make it a seven-point game. They're going to give it off to Jones. The exact same play they ran before, but they succeed this time. It's 34-27 onside kick, and Townsend does it. He saves the game, and UND will walk away. Yes, with the upset victory, nobody had them... Winning this game, Colorado State is a significantly better team. But not today. UND wins 34-27. And not really as close as the score indicates. Really dominated that game. Uh, Colorado State got a few late touchdowns there to make it interesting. But there you go. Miller with 72 yards. Sutton with 53, each with a touchdown. Greg Harden had the lone receiving touchdown, 2 for 39. But the freshman, Jameer Jackson... Four receptions, 37 yards. He adds to his totals on the season. He only trails Greg Harden in the receptions department on the year. And here we go. Looking at some defensive stats. A couple sacks on the day. Brian Otto and then Andrews and Mercero 
tag teamed for a half sack on that one fumble. And there you go. Miller is perfect on there. He is 11 of 11 on field goals this season. He's having a great year kicking. I mean, our, our special teams has done well. Well, at least on the kicking side. But uh, there you go. Mr. Jones. That's his real name. Not a good day running for the, the Colorado State Rams. But look at this. Crockett Gilmore. Six for 91 and two touchdowns. Including a long of 29. Tearing up our defense. And that's frustrating. I always hate it when there's like one guy who just burns you to pieces. It's so frustrating when you can't stop him. But that's what happens when you kind of have the defense that we have right now. There you go. Player stats. Their team stats now. We had 308 yards. We held them to 292 yards, which considering everything that's happened this year, that's a good defensive performance. I hit 8 of 11 on third down. That's per, that is probably the best we've done. I, I don't know officially but that was really good third down percentage and there you can see the ncaa players of the week pause that if you want to see it more in depth and there's the mountain west players of the week i think we should have had a guy on there i don't know who i think we just should have had a guy but uh, just to look at a few conference standings here army is at the top of the big east north division obviously if you saw my conference changes at the start of the season and i just wanted to show nebraska there because that's my team, I mean, UND is my team as well, but they're FCS. But uh, there you go, FIU taking the C USA to town, and here Utah is undefeated, number 20 in the country. Next week, we take on UNLV. They are winless, so I'll see you guys all then.